Now let's join our commentator, Sam Menneker. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to All-Star Championship Wrestling. We have a tremendous card today. One of the bouts you'll see is a six-man tag team match featuring Mulligan, Ray Stevens, Baron Von Roschke, and their opponents, Sailor Art Thomas, The Crusher, and Dick the Bruiser. We'll get underway with our first event immediately following these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our first event, one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Our timekeeper is Harry Black, the referee Paul Mishler. Introducing the contestants from the Haight-Ashbury dis District of San Francisco, weighing in at 214 pounds, brilliant Mark Manson. Mark Manson is accompanied by Angelo Papo, who will second him. In the opposite corner, from Xochimilco, Mexico, weighing in at 210 pounds, Jose Martin. The referee is uh, checking the wrestlers. Papo uh, saying something. We can't quite get what he's uh, arguing about. We haven't seen Mark Manson as a wrestler as yet, but he claims he's very good. Angelo Papo uh, taking care of uh, Mark Manson. There's Manson. He uh, seems fairly well built. Referee uh, calls them together to clarify some of the rules. A great card today. You'll see Killer Cortez, Prince Pullins, Jim Alexi, and of course that big six man tag team match. Okay, we're ready to get started. There's the bell. We're going to go along with page 32, uh, Angelo Papo here, and page 34, and by that time, we shall have victory in our pockets. Here's Thank the book. You You're worried so much about the book. Everything's down here. 32, the 33, action, and 34. The action has started. Angelo Papo showing us that wrestling book with uh, pictures of wrestling holds. Jose Martin of Mexico, very fast, very classy. He does a nice go behind on Mark Manson. Now has him in a full Nelson. Both men now uh, with a series of go-behinds, and Martin comes up with a hammerlock on Manson, and Manson's definitely in trouble now as Martin puts the pressure on. And Manson goes for the ropes. Manson goes for the ropes and gains an automatic break. Notice the power and size of Mark Manson's triceps and biceps. Nothing can hurt that man. You're hearing from Angelo Poffo, ladies and gentlemen. Side headlock by Manson. There's a choke hold by Manson. He's choking him. Punched Martina, went through the rope and hit the floor and hit it hard. He is getting up. I didn't think he'd make it. Boy, he fell right back on the. Boy, he hit the back of his head. 
He's out again. Hansen missed the kick. Martin following him now, and Masson running to get away. Martin. Masson, let's go. You have to admit it, he's tough, he's clever. Are you speaking, uh, Angelo Pop, are you tenacity. talking about uh, Jose Martin? I am talking about. A beautiful takedown. The flying Toho by Jose Martin on Mark Manson. Mark Manson demands that he be introduced as brilliant Mark Manson. At the moment, he's not looking too brilliant because Martin is completely out wrestling him. We have a sensational card today. Wait a minute. Papo's getting up on the ring. And Manson goes to the outside of the ring. And he gains an automatic break. He knows how to get out from every predicament. Every thank, thank predicament. You. That was page 33. Thank you. Our director today is uh, Jerry Green and assisting us at ringside, Ray Clips. Boy, look at this. Uh, our team take over now. The referee stopped him from using his fist. No one can blame him, though, because uh, Martin has been, has been roughed up by Manson. We have a distinguished visitor at ringside. Mr. Al Farb will be talking with him in a moment as a drop kick by Martin and Manson right outside. Here's Al Farb of the Indiana State Athletic Commission. How are you, Mr. Farb? A pleasure to have you at ringside. Thank you, and it's a wonderful crowd and a good show. I believe we have the world's greatest wrestlers here on All-Star Championship Wrestling on TV. Right, sir. Both men exchanging punches, but uh, Martin certainly having the better of it. And Manson is really in trouble. Martin flips him into the ring. He has him covered. Can't hold him down. Manson is fighting hard. Martin takes over with a front headlock. Dropped by Manson, who now has a uh, step over toe hold. Martin's away. He clubs Mark Manson to the head. Martin doesn't speak too much English. Symphony you just heard a prediction by Angelo Papo. Martin sends Manson into the ropes to drop, hits those ropes and drops back into the ring. A two count. And a three count. The winner of the match is Pop is uh, Jose Martin, who is uh, attacked by Papo. The match is over. The match is over. The winner, Martin, a uh, cowardly attack by Angelo Papo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, We'll be back in a moment. A beautiful so victory, that's what it is. We'll be back in a moment, so please stand by. I just want to tell you again, though, the winner is Jose Martin. Martin is the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, promoter Bob Luce has done it again. 
at the Air Conditioned Amphitheater on Saturday, June 28th, starting at 8.30 p.m. You fans are going to see one of the best cards of the year, a World Championship match, Bockwinkel and Stevens in there against the Crusher and Dusty Rhodes. In another top match, you'll see Les Wolf against the great Billy Robinson. And here's a special. There'll be a 10-minute handicap match, pretty boy Bobby Heenan in there against Ivan Putsky and fans. Heenan has to post, he has already posted, a $5,000 bond to assure that he will appear for that match. It's a 10-minute handicap match. Putsky must beat him within 10 minutes. In other matches, you'll see uh, Miller versus Thomas. It'll be Eagle versus Guzman and uh, Reynolds against Vassery. That, of course, will all be at the amphitheater, a sensational card. And ladies and gentlemen, it's very easy to order your tickets in advance by just picking up your telephone and dialing T-I-C-K-E-T-S. Dial tickets on your telephone. That is the number for Ticketron where you can uh, order your tickets in advance. So make a date right now. Say, here's Bold Eagle. Well, Sam, it's great to be back in the big city. Uh, I'm so proud to be on a great card like this here. I tell you, this Heenan here, he's had to post a big bond, but the main thing he had to post a big bond for, he kept running out of the darn ring all the time. Now, this time, this is going to show that he's going to be right there in the ring, and he's going to wrestle a man, and the man is going to just beat him down and be, beat him for once and for all and show him that, Heenan, you're not that great. Everybody's got your number, and I am, for one, with all the rest of all those people in Chicago, going to sit down there and watch you get beat. It'll be a great match, there's no doubt about it. We're just about to get ready for our next event. We're waiting. One of the wrestlers in the ring, uh, Clem Turner, is in there. The referee, the referee for this event is uh, Ralph Hamilton. And here entering the ring, Killer Cortez. Clem Turner is a football star for the Denver Broncos. This event, ladies and gentlemen, is one fall with a 15-minute time limit from Detroit, Michigan. Weighing in at 274 pounds, Killer Cortez. He's accompanied by his training mate, Al Barr. In the opposite corner from Ohio, 234 pounds, a very popular Clem Turner. And the bar is leaving. He's being escorted out of the arena by several minions of the law. Referee Ralph Hamilton checks the wrestlers. There's the bell, we're on the way. Man, look at this Killer Cortez, a big powerhouse. Outweighs Turner by 40 pounds. Drops him to the mat. Clubs him hard to the side of the head. A punch, a forearm smash to the chin. Turner wants to make a comeback. The referee's trying to restore order. He doesn't want him to use fists. Every time Turner makes a comeback, 
Cortez tries to get away, but this time Turner caught him. Has him against the ropes. A smash to the chest. There's a flying man by Clem Turner. Cortez under the ropes. Turner clubs him with an elbow. Now, Cortez punishing that wrist and hand of Clem Turner. Got him on the mat, he keeps stopping it. The referee warns him about holding on to the ropes. There again, he's got him down, trying to break the hand of Clem Turner. The referee is warning Cortez makes him break it up. And Turner's left hand is very, very sore, I promise you that. There he drops him now, again, he does the same thing. Oh, man, 274 pounds. <laughs> Turner, now working on Cortez in the same manner. Much to the delight of the audience. He does it again. And now Cortez is greatly upset. Cortez hanging on the mat. Turner crashes Cortez into the turnbuckles. A punch to the chest. Slams him into the turnbuckles again. And Clem Turner way out in front now. Now Killer Cortez wants to be friends. He wants to shake hands. He's assuring everyone that he won't be rough again. Killer Cortez and Clem Turner. That's, uh-oh, Cortez drops him. As a hard smash to the neck. Cortez is powerful. A punch by Turner. He sends Cortez into the corner. Crashes him into the turnbuckle on the opposite side of the ring. Breaks the rope. Now, Cortez dropped him back, jackknifed him up. It's all over, the winner of the match is Killer Cortez. He picks up that turnbuckle and hit Turner in the head with it. The match is over. The winner is Killer Cortez. Fans, we'll be back in a moment. Please stand by. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking with Bob Luce in just a moment. I quickly want to remind all of you again, it's the air-conditioned amphitheater Saturday, June 28th, 8.30 p.m., Bachwinkle and Stevens against Crusher and Rhodes. 
Wolf versus Robinson. Then there's that 10 minute handicap match, Heenan versus Putski. Now, I, I believe I told you wrong. Bob, didn't I tell him wrong? I said it was a, an appearance bond. Actually, Heenan has put up the $5,000 bond to keep him in the ring. That's correct. He forfeits $5,000 if he leaves the ring. That's correct. So that, that really makes it a, a terrific match. Right. The last match they had in the amphitheater, of course, it was uh, Putski uh, ahead and Heenan took off. And so there's only one way to keep him in the ring, money. Money keeps Heenan in the ring. $5,000 he posts before the match, and that keeps him in the ring. If he steps out of the ring, he loses Forfeits that money. the 5000 and Heenan isn't about to do that, so we're going to see Heenan and Putski in a 10-minute match. Well, listen, tell us about that big match, that big main event. Well, of course, Crush has been waiting for this one because he and Dusty Rose, of course, uh, uh, cleaned the clock of our good friends uh, Bachwinkle and Stevens. However, because of the fact that Starr was signed in the match and could not appear because he was injured, it turned out the AWA uh, Commissioner Blackburn, he had to uh, reverse a decision that night. They took two straight falls, but now it's, uh, it's signed, it's a legal match, it's going to be Crusher and, of course, Rhodes against Bachwinkle and Stevens, who are still the title holders. And let me say to the fans that they know how the Crusher feels. Need I stand here and say anything more? The Crusher's already talked to the fans of Chicago, and they know that he's out uh, to win. And uh, listen, I don't see how that there can be any... Uh, uh, that can't help anybody now. Uh, the fact is, it's going to be too straight again, I'm sure. They, they really beat him up the last time. They'll do it again, Sam. It will be a sensational night of wrestling at the Air Conditioned Amphitheater on Saturday, June 28th, starting at 8.30 p.m. As usual, Bob Luce has come up with another spectacular card, and fans, I know you'll all be there. Well, we're ready to go in our next event, ladies and gentlemen, and... Uh, the referee for this match is Paul Mishler. Paul Mishler. This event is a one-form match with a 10-minute time limit. From Chicago at 230 pounds, Prince Pullen. His opponent from Chicago at 229, Jim Alexi. Referee Paul Mishler checking the wrestler. Jim Alexi, of course, is uh, of Greek descent, and he has his beautiful jacket and hat. Greek national costume, I'm sure. Very fine young man. We're ready to get started with the match, but the referee must clarify some of the rules. There's a nice handshake, and the match gets underway. Against the ropes, clean break. An arm drag by Pullins, side headlock by Alexi, both men in the ropes, and uh, both men quickly to their feet. An arm drag by Alexi, head scissors by Pullins. Our next event will be a six-man tag team match, and we're really looking forward to that. A hip lock crashes Alexi to the mat. Pullins trying to hold him down, but Alexi moving around. Holds him over. A one count. Now both men have the ref. Well, they had him down momentarily. And they're in the ropes, and that, of course, will mean an automatic break. Nice hand by the audience. Beautiful go behind by Pullins. He has Alexi in the ropes, and he releases the hold. Step over toe hold by Jim Alexi. Once again, uh, we must say that it's always a nice change to see a clean match. The wrestling is a rough, tough body contact sport. There's a lot of rough matches, but every now and then we do see a clean match, and uh, it is wonderful. 
Right now you're watching two uh, outstanding exponents of scientific wrestling. Step over to hold by Pullins and Alexi reversed it. Pullins punishing the leg. Alexi trying to twist him over, does so. But Pullins hanging on and they both almost fall out of the ring, but they're stopped by the ropes. A hip lock. Alexi hanging on to Pullins, who's squirming around. Keep from being pinned. Pullins on the way up. He's on his feet. Alexi hanging on to the headlock. The Prince picks him up. Tries to throw him off, but he can't do it. Alexi holds on. Out of one and a half count there. Jim Alexi hangs on with Bulldog tenacity. And... Uh, the Pullins fighting hard to get away. Just check with our timekeeper, Harry Black. There's about two and a half minutes remaining in this match. And it's an evenly fought match. Evenly wrestled. So far, neither wrestler seems to have the advantage on the other. Into the ropes. Alexi over him. Oh! A body block by Pullins. There's a flying mare. He covers Alexi. Couldn't quite hold him down. Alexi got away. Grabs that headlock again. In the ropes. Jim Alexi has been very uh, effective with the side headlock and has used it throughout the match. Pullins throws him off. He hits the ropes. He jumps over Pullins. Takes the side headlock again. Nice move by young Jim Alexi. Time is running out on the match, and uh, neither wrestler has uh, an opportunity yet for a pin on the other. They're evenly matched. It's a well-wrestled match. Alexi, uh, very effective with the side headlock during most of the bout. Into the ropes again. Oh, beautiful arm drag. Uh, just about uh, 45 to 50 seconds remaining in the bout. And now it's Prince Pullins with the uh, advantage. But they're in the ropes and it's a clean break. Alexi having a little trouble with that shoulder. Again the side headlock. And the head scissors now by Pullins. Both men moving around. The bell has rung. A beautiful match. And the referee calls it a draw. And the fans really like that match. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment, so please stand by. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling is a rough, tough body contact sport. It's certainly one of the most exciting sports in the business, 
And uh, something happened recently that many of you know about uh, when two wrestlers, uh, the Crusher and Dusty Rhodes, defeated the champions, Bockwinkle and Stevens, in a recent match. They defeated them two straight falls. However, they did not win the title. Now, this is a, a very uh, dramatic event in wrestling. And uh, to explain why they didn't win the title and why there's been a rematch, we have with us uh, Bob Luce, the promoter. And Bob, that was really something. And everyone around the country is talking about that. Well, I was at ringside that night, Sam, and uh, Henry Van Loon was there, of course, and he represent, represented the state of Illinois. Also, Harry Heatley was there. And uh, what happened, they took two straight falls. This was May 17th. The Crusher and Rhodes took two straight falls from Bockwinkle and Stevens. Starr could not appear. He was injured. And he had been, uh, Crusher had been examined in the dressing room. And the commission, because we always have a standby wrestler. At the last minute, we had to call him into action. We had to call it into, we had to call this match into play. It wasn't signed legally, and that, of course, was the uh, problem we had at ringside. However, the belts at ringside were given to uh, Crusher and Rhodes. I was there when it was done, and because of the fact that they had beat one, two straight falls. And, of course, what happened was, on my way out, a lot of the fans came up to me and asked me, uh, do they have the belts? And I said, definitely, absolutely. Well, since, of course, since the match, it has happened that the, uh, ch uh, the commissioner of the AWA, Blackburn, has uh, said that you have to have the uh, contestants signed to a legal contract. And in this case, uh, Bockwinkle and Stevens won uh, their uh, problem. Their, they won this uh, disputed uh, well, they, case. They fought it through. I mean, they... Even though they didn't win the match, they, I mean, legally, they signed to meet Crusher and uh, Superstar that's Graham. That's correct, and that's why the match was, uh, so we say, thrown out. In other words, it wasn't It was acceptable. actually a, a non-title match then. It was a non-title match. Thing. But that night, that night, Sam, believe me, there was all kinds of chaos because, believe me, I want to tell you, when Crusher ran down the aisle with his street clothes on because we put him into service just that quick, and he didn't even have a chance to take off his coat because he couldn't put his wrestling togs on. It was too late. They tore his clothes off, and they tore everything but his pants off, and in the course of the match, they tore one of the pants legs off. We have film of that. But let me tell you, the Crusher was so irate that he and Rhodes went right to work beat him two straight falls, and Crusher hasn't forgiven him, and especially now because the belts have actually were taken away from him after they were given to him. So now you have an, a, a match that is going to cause all kinds of uh, interest around Chicago because everybody knows what happened, and now they're certain that Bockwinkle and Stevens can be beat, and that's what's important, Sam. They can be beat, they've been beaten, and, t and it's official now. It's for the title. Well, you know, th uh, one thing, though, you see, uh, naturally, the sentimental favorites and my favorites and yours, I'm sure, would be Crusher and Rose, but maybe they're a little bit over-eager, you know? They, because no, Bockwinkle no. and Stevens are very smart. Not, not at all, Sam. They aren't over-eager, and I'll tell you why. Because the Crusher is a professional, and Rhodes is a professional. You, you know, there are such things as, like, Star is a young fellow in the business. When you're a professional wrestler, you have a job to do. A.J. Foyt, when he goes out to drive the 500, he goes out, he's a professional man. And Crusher is a professional wrestler, as his Rhodes is, and they've been through the toughest, roughest matches, and they've already beaten them. They have the psychological edge, and believe me, fans, I'm talking to you now. I definitely feel that uh, this, is, this is just a perfect match, and I'm glad they took the belts away from the Crusher and Rhodes. I'll be frank with you, because I want to see it all over again. Well, I certainly don't blame you, and I know the fans feel the same way I do, and many of the wrestlers. It's the most talked-about match in the country, and uh, promoters and wrestlers from all parts of the nation uh, have made reservations to see that with you. No question. Sam Munchnick from St. Louis is coming in, and also uh, we have the promoter from Detroit, also Los Angeles, and Sam, you'll be there. Yeah. As the wrestlers got into the ring, an altercation started, and we almost had a match before... The bell even rang. Fans, this event, two out of three falls with a one hour time limit. From Germany, weighing in at 295 pounds, the master of the claw hold, Baron von Roschke. From Texas, Sweetwater, Texas, weighing in at 305 pounds, Black Jack Mulligan. 
And from Atlanta, Georgia, 250 pounds, the Rebel Rouser, Ray Stevens. Their manager, pretty boy, Bobby Heenan. In the opposite corner, from Madison, Wisconsin, weighing in at 275, sailor, Art Thomas. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at 254 pounds, the Crusher. And from Reno, at 255, the world's most dangerous wrestler, Dick the Bruiser. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a two out of three fall tag team match. And we will carry as much of it as time will allow to the duration of our telecast. The referee is trying to go over some of the rules. I'm sure any rules will be broken tonight in this match. What the referee is trying to do is to get two men on the outside. Two men must be on the outside, one man of each team in there. And we're about to get on the way. There's the bell. And it's the crusher. And he's starting the action against Black Jack Mulligan. Wait a minute, hey fans, here it. hasn't even run yet, and they broke every rule in the book already. How can they get away with this so repeatedly? Can you tell me that? Fans, Black Jack Lanz is sitting at ringside watching the matches, and I'm sure he will be commenting from time to time. He's already found yes, fault. I want to tell him the exact truth for a change instead of listening to you. It's Ray Stevens in there now, and he's going to start the action with the crusher. And Stevens takes over on the crusher, working on the eyes, throwing punches at him, and he shakes him up. He's choking him now. He's choking him, but the crusher comes right back. The crusher hanging him with that chokehold. Stevens goes back and tags. Baron Von Rush. This is the first fall of a two out of three fall match. And uh, we repeat again that we'll carry as much of it as the time of our telecast will allow. Oh, a nice comeback by the crusher. He shakes up the Baron. Pretty boy Bobby Heenan calls a council of war. On the outside. Baron Von Roschke and the crusher. The Baron forces him back against the rope. Throws a hard smash. And the crusher spins him around and hits him back. He kicks him to the midsection. A flying mare by the crusher. A jump to the midsection of the Baron. Here comes Dick the Bruiser. And the Baron takes off. Uh, Jack Lanza, uh, it would certainly appear evident that uh, your teammates are afraid of the well, Bruiser. I wouldn't and the expect crush. you to say anything of the like. But let me tell you something. This is pure strategy on Bobby Heenan's part. Part of the this, defensive the strategy. Will, the battle will sway in our direction immediately. It's Black Jack Mulligan. Uh, wait a minute. Mulligan has reached for something inside his trunks. You know something? I've heard you mention this before about myself and Mulligan. A 
man can't even pull up his trunks and you start saying something like that? Heenan is on the outside sending signals to his wrestler. Dick the Bruiser has Mulligan. He crashes him into the turnbuckles. And now he's got him by the head. He smashes him into the turnbuckle again. And the fans just going wild with excitement. Into the rope, a tremendous backdrop by Dick the Bruiser. And he's holding Mulligan. Oh, wait a minute. The crusher was about to jump off the rope and Ray Stevens got in there and broke that up. He worked on the eyes of the crusher. There's Lanza exactly again. exactly how I got my leg. Did you see that move right there? That's exactly how it was. Two against one. You call that professional wrestling? There's Heenan. There is the example, Meneker. Did he try a wrestling hold? No, he tried to break the man's leg. There's Dick the Bruiser twisting the hand. The fingers of Blackjack Mulligan. And, oh, wait a minute. They have him back in the corner. And all three of them working on him in the corner. They're choking Dick the Bruiser. They're choking him there. The referee's sending the other ones back. Oh, what a beating the Bruiser's taking, but he's tough. Something's going to happen here. And now, Baron Von Roschke has the tag team rope around the Bruiser's throat. He's choking him, and Ray Stevens kicks the bruiser in the midsection repeatedly. Mulligan has that rope around the bruiser's throat. The Baron is kicking the bruiser, but the crusher is in there now. He throws a punch. He slams the heads of Von Roschke and Stevens together. Out of the now. Mulligan grabs the Bruiser. Oh, he ducks! And Von Roschke punches Mulligan. And now the tide of the battle has turned. And the Bruiser with a big backdrop drops the Baron. Now watch this. Oh, wait a minute. He wanted to jump on his leg, but Ray Stevens got in there and broke it up. Dick the Bruiser in there against Von Roschka. These men are animals, they're insane. They should be not in professional wrestling. And you tell me these are the people of people champion? These are their champion? We're the champions, they shouldn't be in professional wrestling. You just heard again from uh, Jack, Black Jack Lanza. Now it's Dick the Bruiser in there. With Ray Stevens and Stevens working on the Bruiser's eyes. He's gouging out his eyes. Oh, he punched the bruiser. But that doesn't phase the bruiser one bit. The bruiser's getting madder, madder and madder. Something's going to happen here. There's going to be an explosion. And the bruiser is after Ray Stevens. And Ray Stevens is backing away. And the bruiser kicks him in the midsection. Look at him go to town. They're all in there now. He throws Ray Stevens out over the rope. I mean, it's getting wilder and wilder. Ronroski punched the bruiser. It didn't phase him one bit. There's the tag. Here comes the Baron. The Baron is in there. And Mulligan holding him. Mulligan holding the bruiser while the Baron punches him. And again he ducks. And now he takes over. He slams their heads together. Dick the bruiser. Going to town. Now the crusher has Ray Stevens. The Bruiser slams the Baron into the turnbuckle. 
Boy, what a wild tag team match this is. They slam them together. A punch. The bruiser is after Von Roschke. Another big smash. He takes over. He punches Von Roschke. Now he crashes him into Mulligan's head. He slams their head together. It's all Dick the Bruiser now as he takes over. They send him into the rope. A big double back drop. Dick the Bruiser climbs that rope. He jumps on Von Rush. He's got him covered. One, two, three. And it's all over. The great fall of the match is over. And the winner of the first fall is Dick the Bruiser. Dick the Bruiser winning the first fall. Keenan is arguing with the referee. The first fall of this match is over. It's a two out of three fall match. And the winners of the first fall, Dick the Bruiser. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have. I'm glad we got you the first fall. The match will go on after the rest period, but we must sign off. We thank you for being with us. We'll be back next week with more All-Star Championship Wrestling on television. For almost 40 years, Dick the Bruiser has grappled his way across the wrestling mats of America and Japan. The legendary world's most dangerous wrestler isn't really that dangerous at his Northside Indianapolis home, but does still step in the ring from time to time